Caleb here, and today I've got this Yamaha 12 string back out. It's the one I did quite a bit of work to getting it up in good playing order. And if you remember, right towards the end, I said it really needs the neck reset, and I wasn't sure the customer wanted to go that far because I had far surpassed the value of this instrument. Well, today we're going to pull the neck on it. So I'm going to set it down and we're going to get started. Uh, no point in wasting any time. We can get right to it. So I've got the strings off of it. I thought I'd go ahead and just do that real quick. That wasn't something I really needed to film. I'm going to put some tape around the tongue, the fretboard extension, the part that goes over the body. The first thing we're going to do, well, very quickly here, we're going to try and unstick that from the body. Because if we're going to pull this neck out, we have to unstick this extension. I'm actually going to go ahead and pull the fret at the joint and try and drill the two holes that I need to get some steam in here first. I think that's going to be easier to do before this is loose, is to pull this fret because this dovetail joint goes right along here, so the ends of the dovetail joint will be right in line with this fret. Or the dovetail joint is right in here, so I can get on either side of that joint by pulling this fret here and drilling some holes under the fret. Then afterwards, I can put that fret right back in, and you'll never know that it was gone. So I'm going to pull that first and start get started with some holes, and then I'll loosen this from the top. So... Step one, very carefully pull that fret. And you might ask, which fret do you pull? Typically, it's the one that's right after the body joint. Some acoustic guitars join the body at the 12th fret. Some of them do the 14th. That's the two you'll see the most often. This one is the 14th, so I'll pull the 15th. It's the one right after the body joint. All right. I'm putting a little water on there. I think that helps soften the wood, which allows the fret to come out a little easier. Some people might say that that makes the wood swell, but typically wood doesn't swell in that direction. On the grain, it will swell in this direction. Uh, some people also suggest heat to help pull those out, and I may go that route. I'm going to start without it and see if it'll pull easy enough. The goal here is to not get any chip out, which would tear up the fretboard. It's coming. I'm just trying to go real careful, real, real careful with this. Because I have to put this fret back in here. To be totally honest with you, I think that's the cleanest fret I've ever pulled. I'll zoom you in here a little bit. That joint is probably as good as you can ask for for pulling frets. Um, you know, it has tang uh, kind of points on each side, so you're going to pull out a little bit more wood than you wish you had, but that's probably the cleanest fret I've ever pulled out. So we'll set this aside, but we'll hold on to this because we'll stick that fret back in there, assuming it has no big damage to it. And it doesn't look like it. So we've got that fret pulled. Now what we'll do is mark a couple of points pretty evenly spaced where I'll try to hit that dovetail joint through the board. I'll grab the smallest bit I can. So we're putting the smallest hole in here that we have to. But this is the way to do that. So I have got a 5 64th bit which is the right size for my, my steamer nozzle, which is actually a, a ball inflator end. That's what, I've been, what I'm going to be using here. And it measured 5 64ths. So 5 64ths seems like the right size. 5 64ths is also smaller than the footprint of the fret uh, forward to back. So the fret should cover up the hole perfectly. But that's good. Now we just got to drill this. Uh, this is one of those things that uh, you kind of, you, you guesstimate on it, you know. Uh, obviously I can't see the joint that I'm aiming for here. This is just, 
after having done a few, you kind of get an idea about where these are. And I'm pretty sure I hit it because this got a lot easier as I went in. It kind of just dropped. So I'm pretty sure that hit that joint pretty well. I'm not so sure about that one. We'll try that out and see what we can do. Um... Now, the next thing I'm going to do, I did that while everything was stiff, so drilling those holes would be easy. The next thing we're going to do is loosen this whole section that overlaps the body. So for that, I'll get out my heating tool, and we'll start heating this up, and then I'll start working a knife underneath. So we'll get to going on that. So you can see I've got the heater on there. I've started on this, this side here. Um, I'm just trying to get it warm. I've also got my little palette knife out here that I've been starting to work underneath. This is going to take a little while, but I'm starting to get it going. It's taking quite a bit of time to get everything nice and hot. So I'm really trying to soften that glue underneath the fretboard, and it, it doesn't really want to come, <laughs> come soft. So, um... Now, this is going to be a lot of leaving the heat on there, getting it nice and warm, maybe setting it to the side and start working my knife underneath. We'll, uh, I will keep working at this for quite a while. I'll bring you back when I make a little bit more progress. Until then, I'll see you in a minute. So, I've been working at this for a little while. You can probably see I've got this knife in here a little ways. And I'm just working it back and forth. I'm not really trying to pry on it. Once again, this top is awful soft. So up and down is not real good. And this knife is not real, real, real strong. So I'm just trying to work back and forth until I can get a little deeper in there. So I'll work at it a little while. Then I'll set my heater back on here. Let it heat up for a little while longer. It's a real back and forth. I just thought I'd show you a little bit here. But I've started working my way across. I started on the base side and I think you could, you could see there I was getting pretty close to the treble side going at the back here. So a lot of it's just getting it warm enough to soften the glue. And you also got to be really careful because this this iron here is 400 degrees which means those frets are 400 degrees. Um, it's it's warm. It's really, really warm. And you can see I'm working that knife in there now. And it's just that's pretty what pretty much most of what I'm doing here is I'm trying to keep it going straight on and then just wiggling it left or right. I'll keep working at this for a little while. Once again, this is going to be a, a fairly long process, but uh, it shouldn't should take me a whole lot longer, and we'll be looking good. So I've worked on this quite a bit now, and I think I've got that tongue pretty loose. You can see I've got this neck removal jig on here. This is sent to me by a very nice viewer, Kenny. I am very thankful that he sent this to me because I really needed it to get this thing out of here. So I've got this removal jig on here. What this does is this puts some tension on the heel of the neck. So it keeps it kind of pushed in. So as we start to steam this joint, as it loosens up, it'll pull that neck up. I've got some leather underneath the heel, and it's like soft cork on all the parts that make contact with the guitar. So we're looking good there. I believe we're ready to start putting some steam in here. Find where the hole is, how it goes down. There we go. Now I'm going to get some paper towels ready because this might make a little watery mess. I've got a little button over here to the side. You can't see it. That's what will let the steam start coming through. 
And I think I'm just about ready for it. So I'll see how this goes. I'll let just a little run through. I want to see where uh, where we're going here. I can't really see inside the guitar. I want to make sure we're not spewing water all over the inside. Doesn't really look like it. Okay. Do a little more. I think you can see it's starting to really spew out there. So I'm gonna I don't know if you can see it, but there's water coming out the sides of the fretboard, which is which is good. I just want to make sure we're soaking up any of this hot water. Um, you don't really want to leave any water on your finish. I'm going to try to keep that soaked up. I'm sure you can hear it. It's steaming away. The yellow tube is about as hot as I can handle just handling it. I did a couple of things before I got started here, like scoring the finish along the join with the neck, right along the heel, so that I knew that finish won't tear out too terribly. I can actually, well, maybe not. It might be just rolling from the top, but it looks like, it looks like I'm bubbling out the bottom of the heel, which is good. That means that that steam's getting all the way through. I'm gonna get a wrench. What I'm doing here by tightening this down is bringing that that part underneath the heel up tighter so it's putting a little more pressure on that heel. I'm hoping that will start to work that heel up. It doesn't seem to be giving me too much resistance. It might be loose. I think I'm going to turn that steam off. Acting like it's still stuck on the tongue. The neck portion is totally loose. So I think what I'm going to do is take this off of here and then very very carefully work that tongue wherever it's still stuck. So I've been working on getting this cleaned up for a little while now and you might be thinking what's he doing? He's got the neck back in there. And right now the neck is back in there because I was rechecking that neck angle. Um, you can see, no you can't. You can probably see now that my straight edge when put on the frets runs into the bridge. I really want that about, oh, about a sixteenth. Maybe a little more, less than an eighth inch off of that bridge while it's sitting on the frets. Once you add the height, take the strings off the frets, your saddle's sitting at a really, really good height. So as of right now, the where the angle sits, it runs into the bridge and it needs to come up about that much. I know you probably can't see that, but I'm getting an idea about how much it needs to come up. So because that neck angle is not good, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to change it. And how we change it is we take some off of the heel to change the neck angle. So I'll take kind of a wedge shaped to bring that neck down. Now, I'll take more off at the bottom of the heel and I'll take virtually nothing, which probably is not virtually, probably literally nothing off 
at the point the neck meets the top of the body. That won't actually change anything as to where this neck join fret is, because I won't have taken anything off of there. This will just have moved this angle downwards. So there is a mathematic formula to tell you exactly how much to take off the bottom of the heel. I'm not going to pretend to know what that is off the top of my head. I'll have to look it up. And even when I do, I probably won't go to the full uh, full measurement right off the bat. I'll take it in little bites. That way I don't overshoot it. I would much rather have to cut it two or three times and then overshoot it in the first go and have way too much neck angle, have it sticking up like like this, you know, that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but I I really want to sneak up on this because the least amount you have to change is the best for this because you really don't want to overdo it. You put too much height on that saddle and you'll cause issues down the line. So the least amount of change I can get away with and get it right is the best. So I will, you know, kind of get an idea here, maybe get some measurements going and I will bring you back when I'm about ready to start cutting on this neck heel. So after doing some measurements and doing some calculations and stuff like that, I've decided on a number, and I think it's going to be undershooting it, so I'll probably have to take some more off anyway. But I'm starting at 25 thousandths of an inch. And what I'm going to start by doing is just scratching that line on the bottom of the heel. I'm going to start that line on the side of the heel as well. Now, I have to take 25 thousandths off here and nothing off down here. So I'll get out a sharp scalpel and a straight edge, and I'll basically mark down from 25 to nothing. So I'll have a line scored in there so I know, so I know how much to take off. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but there is a line in there now that runs from my mark on the bottom of the heel to basically nothing that I've scored in with this scalpel blade. I will do the other side as well. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it, but I'll get that done. And then basically what I'll start doing is start carving this away. So now that I've got all my lines marked, I'm going to take my chisel and start working this out. And this is going to be kind of a, a fiddly process because there's no good way to hold everything. And I got to be real careful with this. And you also don't really want to cut out on these, especially on the sides, because you will tear this out and take off way more than you want. So you want to keep cutting in, into the neck, not out. It's a lot of things you got to remember. And I might need to sharpen my chisel, but this is going to take me a little while. Basically, I'm just taking off to that line. And that line should help keep my cut straight because if you end up with this being you know uh wonky it won't meet up back to the body the correct way so there's just a lot of processes going on to make this end up right um i'm not going to be able to show this on camera really well and it's going to take me a little while to be doing this really carefully Because I'm going to have to move this around and hold it closer and in some different orientations. So I thought I'd just show this little bit and then I will take care of the rest of it off camera. So I'm fairly certain I've got this angle adjusted correctly. Uh, it's looking really good. The problem I'm having now is because I've taken off this portion of the heel that pushes that dovetail down there back in. So it's become really loose. 
So I'm going to have to put some shims in, which is expected. You know, I knew I was going to have to do that. So I've gone ahead and made a little piece of mahogany I'm going to glue in here on each side of this. I try to make this as thin as I know I can get away with. This one's probably a little thicker than I usually do. But basically, I'm just going to cut some strips to glue on each side of this dovetail. And then we will uh, start fitting it back in there and taking off everything that I don't need until it fits really snug right in there. So I can set this aside for a little while. We're going to focus on this. So what I'm going to do is hold this up to here. Get it kind of lined up how I like it. And then I'm just going to draw on the inside where I need this cut. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Then I can go cut those out and glue those on. That's the treble side. I'll go ahead and label them. This is the base side. That way I know which side they came off of. I'll go get those cut out and then we'll get to gluing those on there. So I've got a couple of these shims cut out. They're looking good. I want to go ahead and start gluing them on here now. I'll make sure I don't get any glue on the back of here because the way I'm going to clamp this up, I don't want anything sticking on that side. I'm going to put these wedges in here to help kind of square this up so I can get clamps on here a little easier. So we'll let that set up for a little while. Um, it is overhanging on the top and on the back just a hair, which is okay. You know, I can always trim these down. Trying to clean up that little bit of glue that's on there. So that ought to be good. We'll let that set up. It's going to take a little while for this uh, wood glue to set up. But once it's done, we'll come back and start working on making that fit back into the body. I've got those shims glued on now, both sides. And you'll see it no longer goes all the way in, which is good. Typically, you would see that as bad. But right now, that's a good thing. That means I can start working at getting it to fit perfectly tightly. And how we're going to get that to fit perfectly tightly is using little strips of carbon paper. What this will do, we'll put this in with the dark side facing the neck where we've added the wood. On both sides. And when it doesn't fight me, you can put that neck back in there. Maybe. And then as you press it tight, the carbon paper will mark where it is contacting and therefore where you need to take it off to get that neck to slide in there deeper. I'll pull that back out. And you can see I'm starting to get marks. I got them on both sides. That's cool. That's good. That means I start carving away at those spots. So it goes in further. And I won't lie to you, this is a very uh, fidgety, almost annoying process. This carbon paper likes to fight you in every way it can. And you'll think you're getting really close and it'll hang up on one spot that it won't make a mark on real well and it's hard to spot. This is a very back and forth process, getting this all knocked off. I'll use a combination of tools to cut all of this. Right now I'm using the chisel. I'll use the scalpel blades as well. Those can be really helpful because they're really sharp. I'll get a little further along with this and I'll show you some more progress. But you can see even just like this I'll shave the dark parts off. We'll stick it back in the neck and do this all over again until it goes all the way in and is totally tight.
All right, so I actually got this all the way in there now, and it's setting at a real nice angle. I'm real happy with it, so we are ready to glue this in here. And it's sitting tight enough that i got to kind of push down pretty good to get it out. I have one piece of advice if you're going to do this yourself. This carbon paper is not really fun to play with. And my little bit of advice is don't worry about trying to make this go too far. Once you've rubbed off enough, you're going to be much happier if you just cut off a new piece and use it. So, this is very disposable. But, I do believe we are ready to glue this up. So, I'm going to get glue in here. And we're going to get it going. Now for the slowest glue I've ever used. All right, I think I might have to change bottles. So, I can't get the glue to come out fast enough out of my little bottle. So, I'm just going to go to this bigger bottle of glue. Both sides of the dovetail. Now, I'll use a paintbrush and start spreading that out. The paintbrush really helps get in all the nooks and crannies so you know there's glue everywhere. I'll work up this. And we'll do the next side as well. So I know I've got thorough coverage. I'm much more worried about good contact than I am cleaning up a mess. So, all right, that's looking pretty good. Go ahead and stick that in there. I'll get a clamp on that. I want to make sure it's under the block. I don't want to be pressing where there's no, no support. All right, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to get another clamp on here and set it, let it set up. I'll do that off camera. I'll bring you back once we've let this set. I'll probably let it set overnight. So I'll see you then. This is set up all night, and it's looking pretty good, I think. You can see i got a couple of clamps on here to help hold the tongue down. I'm going to start working those off now. Drop some leather on the inside. Now, I'm fairly certain I've got a little bit of cleanup to do here, but obviously that neck is restuck. So, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, look this over, see if there's anything I need to clean up. I'll get some warm water. Um, but I think the next thing we'll do is start working on reinstalling this fret and this inlay that popped out. It shouldn't be too long now, and we'll have this thing back in plan order. So I'm going to start by putting this inlay that came out back in. I am going to use some of this super fatic glue. I find it works pretty good for this sort of thing. It's also water cleanup, so that's good because inevitably you always get more glue than you want. That ought to be perfect. It's actually sitting a little proud still, but that's okay. I can scrape that back. That'll sit perfectly flush. And you'll never know that was ever out of there. I've also got the fret sitting here that goes in there. And it should cover up those two holes. I did make sure there wasn't any glue uh, in that fret slot. So that's looking good. I should be able to just reinstall this. There shouldn't be any trick to this. I'll have to go get a hammer and drive that back in there. All right, so now that we've got the fret back in there and the inlay back in there, and we're looking good with that, I believe we're almost done here. The only thing left that I need to do is make a new saddle, and just like that, I've already done, gone ahead and done that. The old one was going to be way, way, way too short, so the new one is added some height to this. And, you know, I thought this guitar was loud before when I had it set up playing the first time. It's going to be a lot louder now with that higher saddle. Because it's putting more pressure down on the top. So this is going to be a really booming 12 string. So, I believe what we can do now is start 
stringing this thing up again. So I'll go ahead and get this thing strung up the rest of the way, and then I believe we'll be done with it. All right, so we are tuned up to a uh, half step down, which is where I kind of want to put this guitar anyway. And we'll check the action real quick just so you know where we're at. That's about 93 thousandths of an inch on the bass side, and I was aiming for 90. Uh, I challenge you to tell me the difference. <laughs> And we're sitting about 85 thousandths on the treble side, which I would say is perfect. Uh, especially for a 12 string, you know, we got all the strings we got going on here. I think that 90-ish to 80-ish is about perfect. And I've actually got enough saddle height. This could go lower. I don't really want to take it any lower. I think it's sitting perfect the way it is. There are a few more things I need to do, little touch-ups, but I think I'm going to go ahead and play this as it is. And then I will go ahead and finish up my little touch-ups, make sure everything's clean so this is ready to go back to the customer off camera. So the next thing we'll do here is I'll get set up to play this thing again. Well, we got this thing in good playing order. I've been playing it and actually plays, you know, I didn't change that much from action height-wise, but I think it plays a lot better than it really should for what we changed, and maybe it's the sound too, a little bit more projection with that extra saddle height. It is a lot, actually, a lot more enjoyable than it was. So I figured I'd play just a little bit for you so you can kind of get an idea with what it sounds like. I've got a new microphone set up, we're gonna try it. I'm also plugged in, so I did test the pickup, so I'll have some kind of mix of what's going on coming out for you. So here we go. This thing is playing really good. That's, once again, probably one of the nicest 12 strings I've ever played. It might give that 70s Martin a run for its money. Um, with the neck resets, these things can be as good as you can get one. And the good thing is, you know, this is set perfect for me, but there's a little bit of saddle height left on there. You know, you could take this down another, you know, few thousands if you wanted it lower. But, you know, for me, I think this is absolutely perfect so i hope you enjoyed watching this uh neck reset on this yamaha this thing should be in good plan in order to get back to the customer there's a few more little cleanup things i got to do on here but i'll get that done off camera so thanks for watching and i will see you later